Alrighty. And we are live, I think. Yeah, we're live. Great. <laughs> Very cool. Hello, my name is Gabriel Quinn. I am a character designer, illustrator, artist, all that fun stuff. Um, just kind of overall a human being, I guess. And uh, yeah, today we are going to be doing some character design. Um, on the last stream, we sketched out some fun ideas. We sketched out th these characters based on um, some older characters I did for a past project. And um, off stream, I added some colors and then I kind of, you know, re oops, revamped them a little bit as well, kind of pushed them a little bit, then kind of separated them out and I've just been sort of polishing them one by one, making them look nice. Sunny Diato is in the chat. Welcome, Sunny. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So yeah, this stuff that we're working on today, also apologies for the screaming birds outside my window. It seems like Tuesday has everybody upset. Um, but yeah, these characters are for, uh, yeah, this is like, would be aiming to be towards either like an indie game or like 2D animation, just to give you an idea of like what these would be used for or kind of just where I'm at with these. Or maybe graphic novel. These could be for graphic novel too, these designs. Um, but yeah. So we had a lot of fun last time just staying staying in the aesthetic, kind of following the rules we set with our original designs. Like the original designs had a lot of like World War II influence or just kind of like early, um, early 1900s kind of like fashion, military fashion into kind of like later on, you know, with like, I guess maybe some sort of like later 19, like 1960s, 70s kind of maybe vibe going on too. But um, yeah, the initial idea behind these characters were, oh, we got Marco in the chat. Welcome, Marco. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I read your lovely comment, Marco, and it means a lot. Thank you so much. I read all the comments. They mean a whole lot. Very happy to have you here. Ooh, also, I'm going to drop the stream link to our wonderful patrons and the Discord. This stream is made possible by all the wonderful patrons um, who, through the Patreon, gain access to our community Discord, where we run challenges. We're going to do a character design challenge tomorrow around 12 EST. So, yeah, join, join that if you wish. But yeah, really, really appreciate all the support. All right, just dropping the link for for peeps. Cool. Yeah, so that's what we're doing today. We're just kind of sketching. Um, this brush that I'm using here, this is a brush that I developed myself. Um, I'm building a brush pack right now. It's in beta still. I mean, that's just kind of like, you know, what I call, like, I'm still working on it, but the beta is available to the patrons, which is nice. So it's been fun to see what everybody's been creating with those brushes. That's been a lot of fun. But yeah. So yeah, let's just kind of get into it. So I've separated these guys out here and there. This guy, I think, I think this guy's my favorite. He's just got a lot of fun shapes to draw. I had a lot of fun kind of uh, making his paler complexion sort of just messing around with the, uh, like pushing the style a bit to see if we can make him work a lot. Oh, welcome Nabs, welcome to the chat. Nabs, one of our lovely patrons, welcome. Um, but yeah, just kind of making this guy pop, you know, I've got I've got his dagger here, his cool dagger. This guy's maybe a little bit more like uh, like lawful neutral or maybe, you know, like almost, almost leave, leaning into maybe a bit of an evil vibe. Um, we don't really know, like, the one thing we talked about last time on stream was that if this character was designed for like a like a for instance like a choices matter game, right? Like a where the choices really matter and you wanna you wanna make sure like the team members are all getting along and stuff like that, then this guy would be you know one of the ones that might leave if you say the wrong thing or like you know oh you only get to choose one you can you can pick him or another character but they they don't get along you know that kind of dynamic. Um, Mouton Juan Juan just joined. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, and this is a totally interactive stream, so anyone can ask any questions about character design, about sketching, about 
you know, whatever life, all that fun stuff. We're working in Photoshop today. Um, we normally work in Photoshop, but I will say I'm very excited for the new Procreate app that's coming out in November, Procreate Dreams, the animation app. I have a feeling we're going to be spending a lot of time in, uh, in Procreate Dreams in the coming months. You know, we might, we might really focus on animation. That could be a lot of fun. We'll have to go hang out with our buddy James again. <laughs> nice. Magno18, welcome. He said, yo, Marco brought me here. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, hey, Moth. <laughs> nice alt, nice alt. Exposed. But it's it's okay. It's allowed. <laughs> Emmy. Emmy's in the chat. All right, sick. We got everybody. We got everybody. Nice. All right, we're going to be streaming for a couple hours today. But, um, yeah, these, these characters I've been working on have just been a ton of fun. They've been really cool. So I'm just kind of continuing to clean them up. The hair on this guy, like, I'm tempted to give it my normal treatment to clean it up. But the kind of strange spikiness of it is almost just totally working for me. I will say what I am tempted to do, I'm tempted to do the classic over the, over the eye, you know. I'm very tempted to do this. And actually, I, I might keep that. You know, it just gives it like that much. Well, it changes the character actually from a character that's a bit more put together to a character that's that's really a bit more disheveled. But I, I really like this a lot. I could even come forward here and have the hair poking out from this angle. It's crazy to see how much that can change the character's disposition and vibe, right? These are the kind of things you want to be focusing on when we get to this level of finishing for a character where... Yeah, it's not like rendered super well, but we are closing out the idea for sure. <laughs> Welcome back, Moth. Also, Benji's in the chat. Welcome, Benji. We got all the homies. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Emmy says, excited. I'm doing some writing for my IP. Super glad to have you as a filler for the for the silence <laughs> NS company in general. Ah, oh, nice. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. One of the best comments I receive for the channel has been um has been like, "Oh, I love turning the stream on or I love I love watching it back and uh while I sketch." Like that's the biggest compliment for me cuz I remember you know when I was learning and uh when I was like in high school and, and university and stuff and like turning on an artist that I liked um maybe their style isn't even what I would normally do, but I love turning on their their channel and just like listening to them talk about art about drawing about their process you know i feel like visual artists a lot of it has to do with like uh like captivating attention or managing attention and and you want to make sure you're like engaged with something in your hand and sometimes like having you know a voice talking to you is uh really helpful for like sustaining a certain kind of attention right Alrighty, right. And he says, also, I love these guys, especially the Russian girl. As half Russian, I feel her. <laughs> yeah, right. Sunny Dato says, it's pronounced Dato with a long I. Daito. 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 I where the AI is, but you can just call me Sunny. Okay, I'll, say, I'll just say Sunny. Well, welcome, Sunny. Welcome. Welcome, Sunny. Hi, do you Benji says, oh, man, I feel the same. I love having you on in the background while I draw. I'm so happy, man. That's so sick. We got Colin in the chat. Howdy back to you, Colin. Sounds like everyone is having warm vibes time, says Moth Moth. Let's go. Man, I say this every time, but you guys are just like the best, best audience. In the game. In the game. All right, so we're closing this guy out. I mean, he feels pretty solid to me. The only thing is, yeah, maybe the hair. So I'm just going to copy him over, blend it with that top layer. I like this kind of covered look. You know, we almost want him to be a little more disheveled, right? Like this guy's, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's conflicted about stuff. He's seen the horrors of war. He knows what, what can happen. And he wants to, uh, he knows, he knows that like, you know, for, for him, like being an assassin is a way to, or in his mindset, being an assassin is a way to save lives, you know? way to save lives rather than rather than like lose lot you know so 
that's kind of where he's at wanting to be efficient with violence i guess it's easy to fall into that rationale when you're at war and when we're developing characters we definitely don't want every character to be to be like a perfect representation of our morals that makes for a very 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 boring story and that's basically all of cinema right now <laughs> um HG says, couldn't agree more. It's a great co-working stream. Let's go. Sunny says, sorry if that came across as rude. I feel like it did. No, I totally didn't, man. No, I love uh, learning how to correctly pronounce names. Like I remember talking with uh, Ahmed Alduri and just like really, really like listening to him tell me how to pronounce Ahmed. Like it's not Ahmed or like ah, ah, Ahmed or Ahmed. It's Ahmed. And ever since then, whenever I meet someone else named Ahmed, they're always like, oh my gosh, you know how to, you know how to say my name. So there you go. Marco says he, he, he looks like the kind of character Tumblr would simp for. Oh man. <laughs> That's so true. That is actually so true. My girlfriend said he looks a little bit like Adrian Brody. So you're a hundred percent right about that. That tracks. That tracks the powerful schnoz. You know, a powerful nose should not be underestimated. And I, I really mean that. I really mean that. Ooh, Zella's in the chat. Welcome, Zella. Oh, we got the whole the whole squad in here. Let's go. That tickled your funny bone. It really did, Emmy. It really did. <laughs> oh, man. That was good. He does look like Adrian. Yeah. I mean, I love Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody is one of my favorite actors of all time. I love him. My favorite role Adrian Brody ever played. This might come as a shock to you guys, but it's actually the Darjeeling Limited by Wes Anderson, where he plays, I think he plays the middle brother of the three brothers. And he his performance is so simple, but it's just very, very powerful. We love Adrian Brody. We stand. We stand the we stand our boy, Adrian Brody. <laughs> Big nose. Let's go. The super sniffer. It's true. The super sniffer. You're so right, Sonny. All right, let's see. We're just kind of carving shapes right now at a silhouette. We're just figuring out what works. Those of you who are kind of wondering, but yeah, I like this guy. He's, he's feeling good. I mean, he's very emo now, right? So maybe we can pull it back a bit. So let's look at our original guy. Ooh, yeah. There's more energy here. We lost the energy here a little bit. He's a little more depresso rather than kind of like, like, you know, feral in a, in an intense way, which we want. So let's run it back a little bit and see what we, what we changed. So one of the things that we changed, which is pretty distinct, is we had his hair kind of come down rather than out. Like one way to kind of get that energy back, I think, would be to get a little bit more of his forehead back maybe. Kind of just rethink the hair on this side. Kind of have it come out more. Be a bit more gestural with our strokes. But we can also have some more weighted pieces too, right? Want it to feel a little oily maybe, like you'd see like a highlight on the hair kind of here and there. Be very, be, be very understated though, like a gray. Per chance. Poor chance. Colin says, same dude. One of my favorite movies. Gosh, Darjeeling Limited. What a classic. Marco says, Big Nose is peak character design. Noses have so much personality. It's not a phase, mom. That's funny, Zella. Yeah, so like Big Noses, that's one way to make a character feel very friendly or very like like strong is is having a big nose like a big nose has presence right it's almost sympathetic 
and uh it's very different from like a thin if you have like a big thin nose that's like a very different feeling than like a big thick nose like a big old big old thick nose that's like friend shape right i love the meme of the uh like the bears if not friend why friend shape and it's true they are friend shape truly like dogs yeah like dogs exactly that's very true that's why those weird noodle dogs and no offense if you have one of these dogs but the dogs that kind of just like look like this and they're like will i do it for you like these weird dogs those ones they're just kind of like a little like they're weird noodle ears they're they're anorexic bullet bodies It's kind of a strange shape versus, you know, like a dog with like a big old schnoz. Big old ears. And big smile. <laughs> That's a friend right there. Clifford moment. <laughs> the borzoi yeah exactly the borzoi dogs Xiao Mei welcome to the stream I also love those dot wall they're interesting they're interesting for the meme they're interesting Zella says they can look really elegant uh, in the right light, you know, that's true. That's actually true. True of anything. Anything can look distinguished and elegant in the right light. Borzois are not special. They should not be treated as such. And this is my certified statement from me to you. So <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> And the right angle. Yeah. Right light, right angle. Yeah. Yeah. E everyone. Everyone. Right light, right angle. Everyone ever. Um, yeah. Cool. So <laughs> canceled for the wrong opinion on dogs. <laughs> Damn. All right. Welcome, Igor. <laughs> DZ Sauce. Welcome, DZ Sauce. Says, I freaking love dogs in general. <laughs> you guys are funny. Oh, man. Yeah, we gotta we gotta bait the lurkers out for <laughs> having the wrong opinions on dogs. <laughs> oh man, you know my boy. I've got this. I've got a beautiful boy, a beautiful doggy boy who I whom I miss very much. He's uh back home with my mom in Bermuda, where I used to live, and um, I'm in New York now. So you know, obviously, I mean he's 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 my mom's dog, obviously, but I miss him a lot. His name is Joji. He's a cutie. And he's, he's got that kind of angled shape. Like he has that, that, this look, but what's nice about him is he's got like this great, this great kind of scruff around the neck and he's got like that kind of distinguished, I don't know, almost like beagle-esque face with these big floppy ears. And he's like a really, really cute boy with a little tufty tail, but he's just like, he's just a good boy. He looks like Scooby-Doo from certain angles and I love him. I love him a lot. <laughs> Benji says Borzoi walk like five sticks taped together. <laughs> uh Sunny says this gives uh Atlantis and Treasure Planet vibes. Oh man, yeah. I love Atlantis and Treasure Planet. So good. So good. So good. She says, I don't know how to feel about this statement. Is it empowering or depressing? Empowering. Those movies are peak. I think you might have been talking about the dog <laughs> moment. Um, DZ Saw says, I was actually lurking in the stream drawing, but dogs, man, love them and love to hear about them. Let's go. Let's go. That's great. Well, glad, glad to know you're lurking here. You know, actually, message out to all the lurkers. This is a message to all the lurkers. I love you. You're great. You're a champ. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, really, hap really happy you're here. Cool. 
All right, let's actually do some drawing, guys. <laughs> We're having too much fun. Uh, we can't just riff all day about Borzois. Okay, so wait, actually, this is a good time, maybe, because a lot of you guys are on. <laughs> Kevin says, love you too. Thanks, Kevin. Um, yeah, while, while a lot of people are on, um, actually, my channel, it's getting close to 1,000 subscribers, which is crazy. Like, that's so cool. Oh my gosh, guys, we're four away. We're four away from, from, from 1K. Are there four people not subscribed in the chat? Can we, can we, can we hit, can we, can we hit, can we hit 1K maybe? We'll check back. We'll check back a couple times. We'll, we'll refresh here and there. Maybe we'll hit 1K on stream. That would be fun. I'm thinking of doing like a, a 1K, like, I don't know, like an AMA or something. I don't know what you guys want to do for it. Or I could do like an eight hour like stream special where like I start an IP in like a, a day because a lot of people really want to know about world building and starting um, like IPs and that's kind of like one of my specialties is blue sky IP development so I would be happy to do that with you guys a lot of people are stuck on their IPs and I feel like it'd be great to uh, give some tools maybe we'll do that <laughs> DZ says, let me go bother my friends to sub. Ah, oh, no, not necessary, not necessary. It can be organic. It's all good. Moth says, hope you're all having a good stream. I got to go to figure drawing class for three hours. That's a good sesh. That's excellent. That's a great three hours, a good sesh. Just harass my friend. God, you don't have to harass anybody. No, no harassment's necessary. Oh, we went up one. We're three away. <laughs> Yeah. Do you guys remember the whole sub to PewDiePie meme where it was like, go, go to get on your grandma's computer and sub to PewDiePie on your grandma's computer. That was so funny. That was so good. I love that meme. That was really funny. And it's crazy. Cause it like worked, man. He, he, he hit, he just, he just like shot up there, man. But I feel like YouTube's different now, you know, all the benchmarks have been hit, 100 million subscribers, all that stuff, like, it's kind of like, you know, we, we know the direction it's going, and I feel like it's easy now just to kind of let go and just kind of do your own thing, find your audience, like, um, and just kind of have a good time that way, you know, that's awesome. All right, this guy's feeling pretty good. I like where this is at. I don't want to overwork this. I really don't. Um... I was thinking about maybe doing the kind of strategy or the kind of look where um, you almost want to give, gosh, not al an albino look, but you almost want to like really push, you know, the pinks in the eyes or, you know, certain elements or like the red around the eyes, like maybe warm up a little bit just to kind of give a little bit more of an edge to the character. Like that's, to me, that's always interesting and a bit of a cooler red or a more purplish red. To me, that always helped with kind of almost evil characters, right? Like, look how much that just did, that small change. And the black-red, like, this is a very Zorn core character right here, which is nice. Very Zorn, Zorn core. You know, we can always go in and, like, kind of clean this up later or, like, make adjustments as we see fit, but that feels pretty good. The scar on the eyebrow feels good, too. I feel like it's contributing to the vibe in a, in a good way. Um... I'm wondering how I want to do this shape. Michael! Mojo! Let's go! Got everybody. Boom. Wait, let's see. Let's see. Okay, okay. Still, still 97. Still 97. Fair, fair. Yeah, I've been noticing that the channel's been getting pushed to more people. More people are showing up and in the comments and stuff, and that's awesome. And great reminder, if you guys like the stream, definitely, definitely hit the like button, you know, if you guys learned anything on the stream or, or fascinated or want to see more of stuff, definitely let me know in the comments. It really helps me actually figure out what to talk about on the stream when you guys tell me in the comments. So that's, that's really good. I really appreciate that. Um, and I'm finally caught up with the comments. So I've seen, read, and responded to every single comment. Love you guys. Don't, won't be able to do that forever, but while I can, I love it. You guys are awesome. Oh, man. Michael says Zorn Core LMAO. It's true. Is he not Zorn Core? He really is. 
You really do be zorning though. Okay, so here's one thing. I put this knife next to him, right? And the knife, like when you're designing a character and you want really key elements, or you want uh, something to come across like really, really powerful or not really powerful, but when you want a theme to be super strong, for me, I will draw like a, a prop next to the character while I'm designing them because I need to know like this is, what's his name? He has a knife. That's who the character is. He's knife guy. He pulls it out. He's flicking it in his hands. He's talking with it. You know, it's it's very visible on, on his person, probably maybe like up here, like on his chest strap or something like that's powerful. Mojo says, oh, geez, I almost didn't see the extra 200 subs. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's crazy. That's crazy. I feel like I was just on my story being like, oh, thank you so much for 800, guys. And then 900 just happened like the next hour. I was like, what is happening? But it's cool. It's cool, man. We're just staying consistent. Three streams a week. We're doing it for, you know, a couple hours, having a good time. And uh, if anybody feels compelled to like, join the discord and just kind of hang out or whatever, then like, that's awesome. You know, ideally I would love for this to become like my main, uh, source of like income or my main source of, of like, uh, just like what I do. It's been so much fun and, uh, I really like it like a lot. I like it way more than I thought I would. And, uh, it's just really fun, really fun talking to you guys and just coming up with ideas on the spot having a good time, like learning on the spot too. <laughs> Are you guys hearing these birds? <laughs> you guys are funny. Oh, we got pee pee poo poo <laughs> says, hey, I'm new. <laughs> OMD Discord, wow. Welcome, oh my gosh. Thanks for joining the team, guys. The birds want to say hi. <laughs> PP says, I thought the birds were on my side. Nice. Yeah, are we are we only two away now? <gasps> we're one away! Oh my gosh. Wait, I have to screenshot that. That's so cool. 999. Boom. Let's go. 999. Yes. I love the number nine. The nine is like super special. Which is cool. Super cool. Who's going to be the last? Yeah, who's going to be the 1,000th subscriber? Oh, did it happen? Let's go! Let's go! Oh my gosh. Let's go! Guys! 1,000 homies. 1,000 homies. Let's go! <laughs> Yo, whoever's the 1,000th subscriber, definitely drop a comment. That's, like, sick. <laughs> Say, like, it was me. And and no imposters. I Actually, that'd be funny if, if everyone was like, I was the one, and there's no way to know. That'd be kind of funny. But, oh, my gosh, guys. Wow. We did it on this 36th stream. We did it. We hit 1K. All it took was 36 three-hour streams. <laughs> Colin said, you're at, you're actually famous now. That's so funny. I was talking to my buddy and, uh, oh yeah, now for one mil. Okay, guys, let's refresh until we hit one mil. Let's go. Um, <laughs> that's so cool. Oh my gosh, live. Let's go. <laughs> that's so cool. All right, well, now we got to design some cool characters. Are you kidding me? We got to design some really cool characters now. Now that we hit 1K, let's go. So we've got we've got knife guy here. Oh man, that's so sick. That's like super cool. What's interesting is that that feels so I don't know why, but that feels so much better than like hitting like 10k on Instagram. Like hitting 10k on Instagram was cool, but like this is like so sick. Because it's different. It's not just like impersonal, you know, marketing and like art. It's like, you know, we're just hanging out. Like that's so cool. That's super cool nice thank you guys so much man that's so cool so we're we're one step away from actually being able to monetize the channel we still can't monetize the channel yet like i think i think i need like a thou like two thousand more watch hours to be able to to actually monetize the channel but um 
yeah dude thank thanks to all the patrons you guys it, it's really made possible by you guys i i want to create a uh a credits that like rolls at the end of the stream so i can just do it live and like just uh like thank everybody who's who's uh who's supported on the patreon and stuff like you guys are awesome Yeah. Also, I've kind of figured out what the next tier is going to be, I think, because we only have one tier on the Patreon right now. And I think that, like, I know what we're going to do. <laughs> Colin says, I'm a subscribe just for chaos. That's so funny. Oh, Solo's in the chat also. Welcome, Solo. Got everybody. Let's go. Zella says, Welp, time to run your VODs 24 <laughs> 7. Listen, I. Uh, no comment no comment if anyone runs the vods in the background all the time no comment <laughs> oh man That's very true, Sonny. Sonny said, yeah, because not everyone that has a YouTube is a YouTuber, but almost everyone on IG posts. That's very true. Very true. <laughs> Big comment. Run the VODs. <laughs> Run the VODs. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right. We actually have to draw. This VOD is going to be so funny. I'm going to have to, like, change the uh, the title to be, like, we hit 1K live with, like, a big, like, <laughs> Keanu Steve says just came across the channel I gotta say excellent work man thank you so much Keanu that really means a lot and uh yeah really I'm really really excited about um sharing just sharing the love sharing the passion sharing the love like art is so cool and character design is so fun and uh I, I really I really love sharing with people it's like my favorite it's my favorite job my favorite hobby my favorite pastime, my favorite way to learn about myself and reflect. I love it. I love character design and art. It's like the best. Something I've been doing all my life. And uh, I've learned a lot from it, both about myself and about the world, you know? For sure. Michael says, time to draw. Come on, stop celebrating your wins and get back to it. So true. So true. So true. Gabe is entering his, his oh, thumbnail arc. That's so good. Oh, man. PP says, I'm making a grilled cheese for the first time to celebrate. Let's go. Mr. B's thumbnail. Yeah, I, 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 I get you're kidding, Michael. It's funny. PB says, I was just in the U.S. for three weeks, and I've now decided I'm American. Sick. Mojo said, bro, facts, no time to celebrate, only grind. I That's how I used to be, man. I used to be like, like, uh, like, oh, a benchmark or oh, success. Great. Now I'm allowed to exist. Back to work because all of a sudden I, now I'm not allowed to exist. <laughs> it was like so fleeting. Yeah. So I was in a discussion recently um, with someone, this is just kind of online somewhere. And, and this, this person was like really concerned about social media, like really concerned about social media and about like how they want to have a purpose in their life with their art and all that stuff. And they, they want to be they want to be, you know, like uh, creating and, and having more purpose and they're having a really hard time being motivated to draw. Like every time they drew or something, they would be super demotivated. It'd be really, really strenuous and difficult. And I was thinking about that more. Um, and really, I think that it was like a, a, a real misplaced motivation, like a seriously misplaced motivation. Um like if you're if you're only doing stuff to post then 
your expectation or your attachment is on a result that you have no control over. Like if you want to get a lot of likes or something, you have no control over that, you know? Um, whereas if your goals are internal and you're like, I'm going to illustrate something that I love and then you publish it, that's different because the publishing happens after you've already had the gratification of I have completed this. And what's interesting about streaming is that, you know, getting on to stream and just kind of hanging out and talking, it really is, I think, twofold. Like for me, you know, it, it keeps me in my groove, keeps me active, keeps me really thinking about the fundamentals that I love and, and want to continue to improve on. Um, and it's also like a mode of sharing knowledge as well. Like it's really interesting. It's not just like I'm creating in a cave and then leaving my cave and and then like posting something and then disappearing again. That was very much the experience before, but I really like streaming. It's, it's really fun. So I'm just scribbling down right now, like uh, potentially like what this guy's fit could be, right? We want to start to figure this stuff out. We want to, we want the gesture to be dope. Well, actually let's do the gesture first. So this character, I could do kind of like a hunched over vibe where like his hands are in his pockets and he's kind of standing. You know, like so, like that, this is a very classic pose, like a three quarter turn here. And then we'd have the opportunity to probably um, show the knife, right? Across his chest, that would be like a great motif. Or maybe it would be like on his leg instead. It'd be like strapped to his thigh. That's almost better. Pee Poo Poo says, how do I join the Discord? So the Discord right now is attached to the Patreon. It's just three bucks a month. And uh, we run like character design challenges in there. And we do just like little work sessions here and there. Um, I'm planning on doing a lot more with the Discord. So I finally made roles. <laughs> so like people can opt in to like getting notified for character design challenges and all that stuff. And like, you know, getting notified for the stream and everything, which um, eventually it'll like all be fixed and stuff. But um but Zella says, I may or may not be running your VODs on my PC now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's cool. Man, you guys are so sick. Ah, uh, it's making me emotional, actually. Like, that's great. Like, I started streaming two months ago. And I started streaming. I It was just like an impulse. It was like, I've been wanting to do it for like two years. And I was like, you know what? Tomorrow's the day. And I just set everything up. And I was like, let's just go. Let's just do it. Um, and, uh. Yeah, man. Just so glad I did. It's been extremely rewarding. Extremely rewarding. Almost two. Damn. Almost 10 p.m. Oh. <laughs> I feel that the time will come. The time will come. It's four. Four. Okay, you guys gotta start putting AM or PM here because because I'm either I'm either like okay or I'm concerned. Four PM. Four PM. Let's go. Yeah, a lot of East Coasters. Based East Coasters, it's four for me too. Alright, I've got another hour, hour and a half to stream today, I think. Before I gotta move on to some other plans. All right, let's let's continue with this uh, with this drawing of our of our wonderful character that we love. Um, I've been watching on Netflix Band of Brothers because I wanted uh, some um, inspiration on like flight suit jumpsuits, kind of a jumpsuit infantry vibe because that's the whole vibe of this crew. Like they're kind of like a like a jump squad. They jump out of planes or they man the planes or they do whatever. Like they're kind of this sort of interesting rebel force, resistance force. I talked a lot about it on the last stream. If you want to go back and like kind of hear a little bit more about the lore of this world building project. Very simple though, like nothing too crazy. But we're having fun in that simplicity just with alternate history and cool stuff. Wanting to show like some of the tactical elements, you know, but not get too carried away. 
Sonny says, ooh, I have that on DVD. Slay? Slay? DVD Slay? Central America here. Let's go. Shout out to Ohio. Shout out to my boy, Ohio. My dad was born in Ohio. South America. Let's go. South America is awesome. I've got like, I've got arguably too many friends in Brazil. Arguably. I'm not going to argue it. I'm not, I'm not out here, but it's arguable. Sonny said, I checked out the last stream by your recommendation. Oh, sick. Oh, because the, uh, the Atlantis vibes. Yeah, I remember. Nice. Nice. Yeah, inventing this kind of costume stuff, it's just so fun. It's so fun. So, yeah, this guy, he's got this kind of vibe. I'm almost tempted to, like, I know it's kind of cliche and strange, but I almost want to give him, like, a cloak. Like, a rain, like he wears, like, a rain poncho. I love when military dudes have, like, rain ponchos. It's really cool. It's got like a cool aesthetic almost, you know? They kind of go out a lot. We could do something like that for this guy if we wanted. Or we could keep him kind of like tight, like very tactical, keep his uniform very dark, you know? Like I'm imagining like, this is my imagination for this guy. There's like a campfire, the enemy's all around the campfire, and you kind of like focus in. And you see, like, through them and the trees behind them, you know, this dude's eyes are there. And he's like, I got to take out these guys, you know? And he's got to, like, get them by surprise. He's got to get in there, you know? Like, I'm thinking, like, rated R. This is a rated R character, for sure. Like, for sure. For sure, for certain. Zella says, make a cool silhouette. Yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like the silhouette where he doesn't have the cloak is maybe even cooler. I don't know. He's a jump guy, so I want to give him a pack, too. They kind of all have packs, but his might be lighter, more of like a scout guy. Right? And again, nothing, nothing really has to be perfect here. It just has to feel relatively functional i want it to be believable right let's flip make sure our plumb line is right okay there's a little off balance but that's that's fine easy fix we were just kind of at an angle when drawing boom baby kind of acts as a cloak oh yeah exactly like a rain poncho, true. PP says, Elmeo, I have a friend from Brazil and he doesn't speak Spanish and I don't speak Portuguese, so we communicate like apes speaking almost the same language, but not quite. It's true. It's true. From Colombia. Oh, nice. I have, I've got some homies in Bogota. Who I haven't seen in in years years and years ah uh, welcome sam man let's go that's funny marco friend from brazil as well told me to speak spanish to him nice <laughs> nice solo says are you doing a mentorship or something similar so okay okay I have been back and forth on this for like a little bit. Um, and I I am going to offer mentorships very soon. Like very soon I'm going to offer mentorships. The goal of the mentorship will be to really level up your understanding of the narrative implications of what you're designing. And while you're designing to be able to catch yourself and solve problems effectively like narratively it's this is not going to be how to build a character design portfolio or how to get a job in visual development or how to do this or that that's not going to be the focus at all there are enough of those that are very good and if you need that mentorship definitely go take that mentorship but i think i'm just going to let myself focus on what i'm really good at 
which is actually teaching narrative, like teaching how to design with narrative in mind. That's the focus. And it's going to be mainly with character, but we're going to cover different uh, applications as well on props, vehicles, uh, even environments too. We're going to do a little bit on environments to prove that someone who doesn't really do environments, like I don't really do environments, um, can apply those tools to do it. That's going to be the focus of the mentorship. So yeah, it's also probably going to be a great way to locate where you're at with your, like where you are in your art journey and where you want to go and like what you actually need to do. Um, because a lot of people like they, they're like, oh, well, I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to do this, but they don't know what the training, like what the actual training is to do that thing. Like if you want to do color keys, you got to do a lot of studies. How do you do studies? You know, oof. PP says, are you thinking this year or early next year? I'm so down if it's possible. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking, man, well, I've got Lightbox Expo in a month and I have to do that. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know how many students I'm actually going to be going to be able to take as well. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is start with a with a workshop. So I think in the next week or so, I'm going to plan out a workshop. It's going to be an all day workshop. It'll be recorded, all that great stuff. Um, and like if you I'm thinking about like an opt in. So like with Patreon, we have like the three dollar tier, right? And that kind of gets you into the Discord where we do challenges and stuff. Just gets you into the community where stuff is already happening. Like the idea behind it is that um, I want it to feel very natural and like very, you know, curated. So no matter how many people join the, the Patreon, I'm able to consistently do the same thing. And it can like scale or it doesn't matter if it's one person or 100 people. So with the character design challenge right now, we've had groups where it's been two people, where it's been 10 people where it's been whichever and it's been great all those times um but yeah we're looking we're looking at uh doing maybe like a monthly workshop or like a bi-weekly thing or like a uh, probably a monthly thing covering topics very specifically maybe like expression maybe like how to how to think about costuming your characters um I'm like a very teach a man to fish kind of guy you know I I don't like give a man a fish I feel like a lot of art YouTube is give a man a fish and I don't like that at all. So, so yeah. And I'm thinking about like, if I, if I wanted to improve on something or refine my knowledge, I would prepare a workshop for it. And then, you know, in doing that, anybody could opt in. And I'm thinking, I'm not unsure about the price right now per month, but it would be cool. There would be an assignment at the end and there would be maybe a little bit of review. It would kind of be natural review that would happen in the discord. Like I kind of, I check in on what people are posting in the art gallery and the sketchbook and stuff. And you know, when people ask for feedback, um, which, which, uh, you know, can't, I can't critique everything all the time, but I, I love to help. PV says, yes, I have the same qualms with art tutorials on YouTube. It's so, it's a lot. PV says, I'm finishing up a mentorship with TV Choi and it's been amazing. So I've been on the hunt for another teacher and your art is really right up my alley. Oh, it's so great. Yeah, TV Choi, that's I that's really great for um that like technical proficiency, learning how to think like in character, like think in the language of character. Which is good. All right, I'm liking the silhouette. You know, we've got the cool kind of straps around. We've got the interesting shapes, you know. I love the shape around the boots where, like, the the pant cuffs kind of are just kind of around. Like, I love this. It's so nice. Just a great shape, right? I almost want to do the other leg out, but it's got to be consistent with the character. Maybe he's doing the kind of like, 
heal the boot is here. That kind of, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a noise. It's a real noise. We can angle the knife a bit. Make it kind of, kind of cool. Sandman says, some say fish are the bees of the sea. Wow, that was so bad. Sorry, I ran out of bee jokes, and I'm trying to stay in character for at least 10 minutes a stream. You know, you're doing a great job, Sandman. Benji says, stop with the grilled cheese talk. Y'all are making me hungry. <laughs> well, you know, what's interesting is, uh, TXLR, welcome. What, what's interesting is, uh, like... <laughs> last stream everybody was talking about climate terrorism in the chat like i'm just trying to draw cool characters and people are talking about climate terrorism it's great i love i love the community you guys are awesome you guys are really awesome yeah i i really feel like uh stream has been kind of getting me back in my mojo too just like you know in my own voice artistically and uh if you look back at the first vods like i'm all over the place aesthetically like i'm all over the place because you know kind of been been out of the swing of it for a little bit life got really crazy for me and uh been recentering, which has been great so thank you guys so much for being on that journey with me it's awesome really awesome Oh yeah, the eco terrorist frogs. Oh no. <laughs> why did I why did I bring it up? Oops. Oopsie. Man, I can't believe we hit 1k live today. That's so cool. Thank you guys so much, truly. Best best community ever. I say it every time and I'm just going to keep saying it every time. Cool. All right, this is feeling pretty sick. Ooh, is it in his jacket pocket? It's got to be in his jacket pocket. But is his jacket untucked? It's not. Not untucked. Or, wait, flight jackets are like... Hmm. Do they? Wait, let me look. Let me look this up. I'm going to do it. Yeah, they kind of they kind of cover the belt, right? Hmm. Here's what we're looking for. This is the ref we're looking for, I think. We got a better res here anywhere? No? No, we don't. That's fine. So it does cover the belt. All right, that's good to know. All we need to know is that it covers the belt. Jacket comes out. Kind of does that kind of, you know, stretchy material thing. So then on this guy, what we can do is we can... Have it come down. And the pocket bulge kind of goes over that a little bit. That way. Yeah, that's good. Good length. Proportions, man. You always want to check your proportions. Make sure your characters are feeling feeling correct. Yeah, we'll give him like a light pack. Nothing too crazy. I kind of maybe want to give him like a like a like a pistol chance maybe he's got a pistol too on his person he's got a pistol on his person oh my gosh wow this chat's going crazy now i know why like 
a lot of people don't can't keep up with the chat. Mojo says a lot more viewers today in it. Yeah, a little bit. Salmon says 1K no vids. It's a flex. <laughs> that's so funny. Abe says I missed the 1K. Ah, that's okay. You can watch it back. Also, welcome, Abe. Love you, buddy. Um, the video is going to go crazy when it drops. Yeah, it's true. I had to earn the right to post videos by doing it. Um... Sunny says, what are your opinions on pirate? I'm writing a short story, hopefully becomes a book. Just like pirates in general? Glad you're enjoying the grilled cheese, PP. Enjoy, enjoy. Yeah, gosh, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, what happens if more people join the stream? What are we, what's going to happen? I guess we'll have a, I guess I'll have a YouTube, a YouTuber fighting boxing event with, with, uh, Steven Zapata. I guess that, I guess that has to happen. It's a canon event. I met him only once. And the second time I meet, we'll be in the ring. Dude, Steven's actually awesome. I'd love to get to know Steven better. He's a cool guy. All right, the knife's got to be easily accessible. Easily accessible knife prop, right? Maybe we do put it across his chest. That's, like, so sick. To have, like, a knife strapped across your chest. That's so cool. Nah, it's got to be on the leg. It's got to be. Maybe we make it a boot knife, though. Nah, no, this is good. This is fine. This is a good design. Ish, good-ish design. All of them. All the pirates ever, all at once. True? True? See, Cowboy, uh, Abe said, respectfully, he's going to pull some demonic move on you. <laughs> Yo, dude, yeah. Steven Zapata, he would start speaking Latin and my blood would boil. Are you kidding me? Thoughts on the great robot pirate island war. That's so funny. You should tell Steven you want to box him. Should we tell Steven? <laughs> you know what's crazy? Steven, Steven's in Queens. He's in New York. Like, I could just, like, I could just, like, go get coffee with the guy at some point. But everybody's so busy, man, including myself. It's hard. It's hard. I'm trying to hang out with James more. He's just in Brooklyn, but it's like impossible to get a hold of. It's it's like it's just like impossible to find a time. What if he's made of knives? What if he was actually a knife? You know, he kind of looks sharp. So there you go. But yeah, so Sunny pirates are cool. There's a lot of pirate lore that I think is worth knowing. Um, so here's some lore. M one of my ancestors, Hezekiah Frith, was a privateer for the queen out of Bermuda, believe it or not. So pirate lore is interesting. Um, the reality of pirates in that era is actually that they didn't, they didn't really do a, a, as much fighting as you'd expect. It was a lot of being scary and people surrendering because you can imagine being on a boat and like a little sloop pulls up with like 50 guys with swords and guns and they just board your boat because they can catch you because you're, they're faster than you because they're in a sloop. Like, what are you going to do? You're just going to surrender because they'll just, you know, if, if it was an actual fight, if you actually decided to fight, there would be like no chance you would ever live through that. Um, all right, we could do the classic gun in the air with this guy. Sorry, I'm like so ADHD today, just like switching back and forth. We could do gun in the air, you know, or we could do, what could we do? What could we do? Hmm. Maybe he's like holding a bag. Or his like hand is on a bag that's like strapped around him. Oops. 
feel like we don't give characters enough bags. You know? Hmm. Probably have to put his other foot on the ground, though. If he's holding up heavy bag. Or maybe not. That's so funny. Mojo says, oh, I've really been enjoying your brush pack, by the way. Thank you. Oh, dude, I got you. I got you. We need a Quiniverse. <laughs> like for all the lore. New stream title, Pirate's great, 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 great grandson hits 1K live on stream while drawing a knife. Gone wrong. No clickbait. <laughs> That's really funny, PP. Jellycake says, hello. Welcome to the stream, Jellycake. Sunny says, my story is his fantasy where pirates actually fight and don't play the int intimidation game. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I love pirates. Pirates are fun because they're taking advantage of a time where there was like a huge economic boom through trade, right? And the pirates kind of said like, all right, there's all this wealth on the sea. We'll just get it in transit en route. We'll just get it en route, right? Because there's no way they can challenge the economic power of like the established structure, but they can get into that choke point, that that basically that bottleneck, right? That, that things have to pass through. So in that, there's an opportunity. So pirates were kind of a flash in the pan. The, that era of piracy was a, was very much a flash in the pan um, of that time because piracy kind of like went you know pretty much dormant after like only I think a few years. It was very very short. Um, and, uh, so pirates are interesting. The idea that they dress the way they dress and all that stuff, obviously a lot of it's Hollywood, a lot of it's all this other stuff. But again, you know, even though Sonny, you're not may maybe doing the intimidation game a hundred percent, you can implement that into their design, right? The idea that Blackbeard had, you know, fuses burning from his beard if, if a guy is running up on you and he's got a sword and he's going to fight you and you're seeing him run up on you, if he's got a burning beard, that's going to like it's going to take up time in your space and distract you. It's like the idea of the battle cry, right? If some guy like runs up to you like roaring and screaming, like that would put you in a state of shock. So you can think about costuming the pirates. If it isn't a fantasy setting, you could push it a lot. You could really push it, right? Um, Zella says we give them emotional baggage instead. No, that's funny. Oh my gosh. Nab says, so basically pirates are the Yakuza of the sea. I mean, you know, what is crime? What is mafia? You know, uh, what, what is, it's all the same thing. Uh, PP says Zella Elmeo, that would just be Gardic phone, but you knock each other's teeth out every two minutes. Oh my God. Uh, Sandman says, Zella, maybe Gabriel can be a pirate in his animatic the way that Steven is a buff AI clone in a space full of Steven clones. <laughs> cool. Mojo says, see if thieves actually invented pirates. True, true. Canon. Um, that's so funny. But yeah, so like, so like, you know, um, pirates are great. They're a fun thing to write about. There's a reason why there's so many pirate books, uh, just like, you know, cowboys, right? In that era of, 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 uh, literature, it's like the, the Western, all that stuff. It's like, you're in a space where everything's stretched so thin, you know, like, uh, it's very much if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, would it make a sound? Like if you, if you murder a man in cold blood, you know, in a gunfight and like no one's around, then maybe like a, a marshal comes around and he goes, I'm here. I'm here to see about these murders. Who's who's done the murder? And everyone's like, I don't know. I don't know. That's it. Lawless. A lawless land. Where the only law is how fast a man can draw his weapon. Hoorah. You know? Like, it's there's appeal there. It's interesting. There is appeal. Oh. All right, so this guy's got a bag. I like the bag. What do you guys think about the bag? I like it. He's a little sassy. He's a little with the uh, with the le with the leg bend. He's a little sassy now. Now that he's right, maybe a little too sassy. Let's okay. Well, let's do a couple things. Let's make his leg bigger. Number one, this boy's tall. 
Number two, we can put a foot out probably. How's that feeling? A little more, a little more plant, a little more interesting. Ah, but he's less agile. Now we'll give another guy a bag. We'll, we'll, we'll nix the bag. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna really cement this guy as a bit of a cold-blooded character. We're just gonna, we're gonna give him a scary weapon, right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to gonna arm 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 over yeah we're gonna arm this arm is not gonna be in the, in the pocket it's gonna be low this cuff's gonna be here get that gesture strong gesture going He's gonna be holding. He's gonna be holding the. Holding the. Okay, wait. Gun can be going across. Yeah, there you. There it is. There it is. And we're gonna do, the rifle. Based on the World War II, probably American rifle, most likely is what we're going to do. And uh, we're going to be doing a fixed bayonet. Now that, that's a scary character right there. Giving him a fixed bayonet, that's intense. Not pretty. But remember, this character is a, a scary, dangerous character. We want him to feel pointed. We want him to feel you You should be scared of this guy. You should be. Even if you're on his side, you should be a little scared of him. You know? He's got the look of death on him. Because this is going to be our extreme, you know, for our character pool that, we're, that we have for this project. This is going to be our extreme guy. Our extreme dark guy, which isn't even that dark, all things considered, right? Um, Marco says, man, I love his pants. He's so gender. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but epic. Oh, gender. Oh, I get it. Gender fluid. <laughs> Simon says, is that a bag that has a sniper in it or just golfing equipment? <laughs> Emmy says, weird question. Do you ever give your characters moles? I should. You know, I used to do that more. I have one right here. I got a mole right here. Um, but yeah, I do give them little features. Like even this guy, I gave him a little scar, a couple scars, one on the lip, one on the eyebrow. You know, maybe it was a continuous thing that happened. Um... It's fun. Emmy says, as the ha as the haver of way too many moles, at least twenty on my face alone, and freckles, they're like spice of skin, spice on skin. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a freckled man myself. Not too many now, but it gets up there. Sonny says the protagonist is named Ronan McLeod and is the captain of the Phantom Pirates with his best friend and vampire mate Alucard. Oh my gosh, that's 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 a lot. That's a lot. But hey, so is everything these days, man. Go for it. Zane it out. And he says I call them chocolate chips. That's funny. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> no, I can fix him. That's so funny. Yeah, don't, you can never fix them. Sandman says, Gabriel, it will be very cool if you made an old man version of him. Oh, like, like he's, uh, like confessing or like talking about the war, like later in his life or something. That could be fun. Oh no, dying phone. Rip? Like a skinny old man version. Skinny old man version. No worries, Marco. Thanks for dropping in. Oh man. Dude, you guys are so nice to each other. It's like awesome. Every other stream, like, I don't know. I feel like there's so much like vitriol and intensity. And like, you know, people are just like memeing each other all the time, but it's just so nice in here. You guys remember that trend when like every YouTuber was like, hey guys, I'm sh going to show you my analytics and like no one is subscribed. So you guys should subscribe. And I always love those because I feel like what a lot of what they don't understand is like, is like people don't like them. They just like their clickbait content or like their clickbait like video. Like they, they don't actually want to stick around to see what they do next. It's just kind of like, oh, well, I'll look at this, but nothing else. I call his first mate Alucard because Dracula spelled backwards. Yeah, dude, I love that. I love that plot point um, in the, the Castlevania game, Sunny. Like, especially, oh man, like I love the show, Castlevania. I th actually thought, thought the show was really fun. What was crazy though is after Castlevania, I was like, oh dude, like can it get any better? And then like right after the last season dropped, like, like Arcane came out. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? PB says, I don't know what it is about the way you draw, but your flow is so satisfying to my eye. The way you draw lines so satisfying. Your shapes are so readable. I'm glad. I'm really glad. Um, took a long time to develop the kind of loose, sketchy style that I've come to rely on. I'm really glad that it's uh, it's successful and you're enjoying the character. And the drawing style. I feel like a lot of people really want to be like hyper clean a lot and uh it's you know a process can be so many things just thinking of the placement here also this is the rough sketch before we go in and and actually uh draw him out i want to make sure all the pieces and pieces and parts of the gun are are working and interesting and all that good stuff <laughs> emmy said you attract what you put out amigo <laughs> it's so true Zella says, some streams are very chaotic, but this one is like a chill chaos. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. I'm really, really glad. The main reason I subscribed. I'm so glad, PP. That's awesome. Simon says, is it still here? It is still here. Some YouTubers still do it. Yeah, I just like, I don't know. Like, wouldn't you take that as a indication? Like, the analytics are like not something to be weaponized for like, guilting people into i don't know whatever sunny says love all the castlevania content so true benji says arcane is so damn good one of the coolest animation styles i've ever watched yeah right i love everyone says with uh, arcane so damn good like everyone says so damn good like that particular phrase gets like shared a lot when talking about arcane which i'm glad because it is it's just so damn good like nothing else really compares to be honest right now in the animation world um 
BB says, actually, I'm not going to lie. Reminding people helps a lot. I'm living proof since I almost always forget until I'm reminded that it's a feature. I also don't remember who, but I've heard some YouTubers on stream say they usually the part of the video that most people liked is usually around when they asked. Yeah, no, I think that's like totally fine. Like, like, I mean, for me, I even say, you know, like, Hey, if you like the stream, you know, hit the like button. If you want to see the next one, definitely subscribe. But it's like, no one is subscribed guys. 90% of you aren't subscribed. It's like, that's weird to me personally. Zella says when they show the graph, sometimes it makes me want to not subscribe just because they show it. Exactly. That's what I mean. I'm just like, I'm just like, what, what are you doing? Mojo says, lol, saying the great art was like a lure. <laughs> That's so funny. Benji says, the Spider-Verse movies are also amazing. I just love unique animation styles. So true. PP says, yeah. Oh, that's what you meant. Yeah. Yeah. Ex yeah. It's just a lot, like, <laughs> begging for Robux. Guys, please, please give me your Robux, guys. Please. All right, so we want to make sure this silhouette is still, like, communicating what we want out of the character. We've given him a bit of a puffy jacket just because I think I just like the shapes, right? That's kind of where I'm at right now with it. But let's think about this for a second. Let's let's uh, let's put a pause in the chat for just, a, for just a hot second and think, like, okay, like, what what, what are we doing here? Um, yeah, what are we actually doing here? So what we're going to do which is what we always do, is we can just copy, copy and paste, work on top of a new sketch, or just kind of augment it while still having the old version intact, which a lot of people don't know you're allowed to do, and they're like, oh no, I ruined it. It's like, brother, you were doing digital the whole time. What are you talking about? <laughs> the power of suggestion versus demand <laughs> i guess jelly says do you like love death robots if so what episode is your favorite i do love love death robots i think some obviously some are better than others uh, duh. but i think the, i think that the disparity between like i think love death robots like there is a garbage tier and there is like you know like like godlike tier or not even godlike just exceptional. And the episodes really really range. They they really really range in terms of quality, in my opinion. With Love Death Robots, um, like there are some that are just so unbelievably pointless. Um, I don't want to be, you know, instead of talking about the ones I don't like, because there's enough people on YouTube just screaming about bad content and being like, this is the worst thing ever. Um, I'll talk about the ones that I loved in Love, Death, Robots. Gosh, let's look. Let's, 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 uh, let's remember which ones there are. The ones with the three robots, I just just absolutely no opinion. It's just like they're, you know, whatever. I liked um, the bad traveling one in the latest season. I actually really liked it. You know, it was very disturbing, but I thought it was really good. Uh, that was one with the crab on the boat. Night of the Mini Dead was really fun. Just a fun idea. Um, Kill Team Kill, I just love seeing Titmouse animate stuff, but it did feel a little, you know, a lot. Um, Mason's Rats was a fun concept for sure. Jibaro was a cool concept for sure. Um, oh man, any of the ones by, uh, what's his name? The guy who did Ice. Oh, I used to know his name. What happened to me? Robert something. Robert. Robert Valley. I got it. I was halfway there. That counts. Ice was so good. It was so good. Um, all through the house, the Christmas one. That one was that one was really funny, actually. Uh, I thought that was really good. Mm 
there were two that were just like oh sunny's edge from season one i actually love that one the fact that she's actually in the monster it's great uh the witness overrated um suits where they're on the planets i love that episode it was so good sucker of souls again fun animation just fun to watch good hunting with the steampunk fox absolutely gorgeous animation really really cool concept the dump was also good um zima blue again robert valley never misses so good and i think the secret war was fun actually but i just like that era of history the secret war like cold war world war ii stuff like i just i like it so that's kind of tickles my fancy a little bit there was two that i thought were absolutely and this this i'll i'll be honest about my opinion there's one called snow in the desert and that was just complete and utter egregious male fantasy with zero point like that shouldn't have been made in my opinion and the last one i'll say is like the drowned giant the drowned giant you know i think that maybe a director just liked the idea and the concept and decided to just go with it but um my god it was like the epitome of of a uh, tell don't show it was like they kept the narration because it's a short story right and when i was in art school there's actually a project people could people could opt in and choose that as their project uh the drowned giant so it's like i know that story and what they basically did was they they i think they had one shot that was an interesting blend between the narration and the visuals other than that it was just a hyper realistic visualization of exactly what the word said it didn't need to be made it didn't need to exist and it did nothing for the story making it animated did nothing for the story and that just bothers me man it bothers me a lot when people do stuff like that sorry i've been totally ignoring chat i went on a i went on a, a a binge there so funny <laughs> sunny says my edge so funny that's good what was the episode about the first one you mentioned did absolutely not like oh oh the one um the snow in the desert it was just about this guy who's immortal and lives in the desert and then the only thing that happens is they try and hunt him down and he meets like a cyborg woman who can also live forever but she like looks really young and he was like a silver fox so it was like older man gets to be with this like young woman for all of eternity and like and like be together forever in the desert alone in a utopia and it's just like there was no point to the story it was just like i don't know the dream of an out of touch man in my opinion i just don't think that content is good for the world i don't think it's good i don't think that stuff should get made but hey, that's just me. Opinions are coming out. Ooh. Ah. Maybe I should be more careful. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe this guy, like... I like the raised arms. So maybe what we do instead is we take him... And we we could have it so he's like holding it more to the side, kind of, or like we could we could foreshorten it a little bit. Oh wait, do we want to keep that? Oh, we can we can cut it. Um, love is grim welcome to the chat love is grim uh love is grim says it wasn't for the showing off of the graphics it's you know pick a better story to show off the graphics showing off the graphics is fine hg says i completely forgot about that one exactly exactly dude and you think about the man hours that went into something like that and like 
it, it Zella, it does sound like a self insert. That's exactly the feeling I got. It was not good. Yeah, it, that's exactly right, Sandman. It was just uh, it was a bit much. PP says his weapon reminds me of a makeshift taser from Sweet Home. I don't know the reference, but cool. Yeah, we could make this guy a sniper too. He does feel like a sniper, right? He feels like an assassin sniper of the knife. So I think I think we give him a sniper. I think that's what we do here. It just feels right, you know? And if something feels right and stays in your head for that long, which it has for me, might as well, right? In which case, you know, we really lay on all the all the gear, all the cool stuff that you can put on a on a sniper normally i don't do these like gun kind of guy characters but when it's stylized and interesting and there's there's a good reason for them to be fighting then i find the stories compelling but if it's just tactical design for tactical design's sake i'm just like bro sorry you weren't tall enough to join the army That was <laughs> that was a joke. That was a major joke. Man, I might go back into the VOD and cut the part out where I rant on every episode. I feel like it's like such a jarring change from what I normally do. Sorry, got a text. <laughs> he is giving long shot black coffee and patience. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. PV says, don't worry about it. It's interesting hearing your thoughts and opinions. True. And hey, if anyone who's on the team for any of those projects is here, then dude, I respect your dedication to storytelling and making stuff it's good it's good that stuff is getting is getting made and just because i don't like your content doesn't mean i don't like you and I'm, I'm sure you're a decent guy cool He gives off guy who smokes in the snow. Yeah, exactly. Like totally, 100% this guy smokes for sure. Zilla says, I think a little ranting is okay as long as it's not the whole thing. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely like, I don't want to be, you know, I can see why it's so easy to like, you know, pull an H3 and just like rag on stuff all day and make nothing. Oh, damn. That's intense, Salmon. Damn. Too real, bro. That's rough dude i was uh i was watching band of brothers and some people you know uh ended up like taking their own life because they couldn't volunteer for world war ii 
And it's like wild, man, wild. Would you put a bayonet on a sniper? Is that weird? I think we can make this work in like an interesting way. Right? Tyrion Genie says, I've watched that. It's crazy. Dude, right? They wanted giants. Damn. Also, hi, Tyrion Genie. Welcome. Long time no see. Hope you're well. I Google it. I think it's possible. Hey, man, I love Googling it. <laughs> yeah, you're so right, Sam. Man. The reason I'm not annotating is because, like, you know... I don't know if I want a lot of like audio talking about the sad parts of life in the video, but heart heart goes out to all all those for sure. HG says, I think it's mindful of you that you pay attention to the amount of ranting you do and try to keep the streams wholesome, chill, and educational. Oh, sick. Yeah, no, I, I like I um I always frame it like this, which is that there are infinite things in this life that can bring you despair infinite things all the time you know there will always be a reason to be truly sad good reasons real reasons and there are also infinite reasons and things that bring you joy so much joy in life and you have to have a balance of knowing the bad but choosing to ultimately focus on the good because there is enough good that is also real reasons to be happy real reasons to be joyful and grateful truly um jelly cake says okay hear me out what if he has what if he has it there because he believes that in a split second combat you can change from being far to up close and having a knife just makes the transition simpler yeah he i think a bayonet is definitely going to be on his person plus it just makes it longer and it's like cool Twing, 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 twing. Like a long bayonet. But he's also got the sidearm, you know? He's also got the, the twing, twing, just in case. All right, this guy's feeling pretty cool now, I think. Oh, damn. Oh, Sunny says, what is your favorite book? I'm genuinely curious. Fiction or nonfiction? She says, that sounds like something Uncle Iroh would say, and I'm completely here for that. <laughs> Dude, I love Uncle Iroh. He definitely, like, made the show. 
the latter half for me, 100%. Fiction. Ooh, fiction. Okay. Fiction, fiction, fiction. What's my favorite fiction? Hmm. It's going to sound weird, but it's probably one that you've never, ever heard of. I picked it up in a random uh, secondhand bookstore, and I just read it cover to cover. I think it was called like Reader on the 167. Reader on the 1 something something. I ended up giving it to someone, so I can't 100% remember the name of it. But, but it was a book about somebody who works at a... He works at a like uh, pulp mill. So he like puts books into like this pulping mill and he's found this, uh, this like USB drive with someone's diary and he like reads it out loud on this train car and there's just like all these roundabout things that happen and everything like that. It's, it's a very interesting story about like the contrast between, you know, found uh, literature and the destruction of books and it's just really cool i liked it a lot that's one of my favorites i don't think i could pick one favorite to be honest that's that's one of them though that was cool um what else what else i loved neverwhere illustrated by chris riddell but maybe i just like the drawings i don't know by neil gaiman um what else do I like? What else do I like for fiction? I love mythology. Like I love Norse mythology. I love Greek mythology. I'm a big fan of mythology and that is fiction. So I love that for sure. Hmm. You guys are just talking about height in the chat. That's so funny. Yeah. Damn. I mean, yeah. I'm like, I'm like 6'1". Sorry. I'm a tall boy. I'm a tall boy. Neil Gaiman is a fantastic author and seems to be everywhere. You know, there's a reason. There's a reason why he's everywhere. You know, he's a he's a good, interesting person. I like what he says about being a writer. You know, being a writer is like going out and standing in the middle of the street completely naked. And that's a lot of the time how art feels when you're really doing something you care about when you feel scared about being vulnerable you know it's like part of who you are as an artist like you know it's like that's a thread to pull for sure for sure for certain okay just a quick time check i have a couple commitments that i have to make sure i do Sunny says, I also love when people implement mythology into their own stories. Me too, man. I've been thinking about creating like a pantheon of like minor gods to like personify <laughs> forces in my life, you know? Like what would the god of ang what would the goddess of anxiety look like for me? You know, like if I were to draw the force that's holding me back the most, like what would that be? I'm very tempted to do a project like that.
Mojo said, tall lad gang, I'm 6'3". Damn, got me beat, Mojo. That's okay. I forgive you, buddy. I had a friend in high school that was 183. He was a cool guy. We would fight often. <laughs> oh, damn. My personal muses. Yeah, exactly. It would just be my girlfriend. I would just draw my girlfriend. If it was my personal muses, it would just be my girlfriend. Three of my girlfriend. <laughs> you're all giants yeah if you guys ever meet me at a convention or something like definitely come say hi i'm relatively easy to spot yeah if anyone's going to lightbox expo i'm going to be there this year so definitely definitely come up and say hi for sure that'll be so cool you know i'll be able to see like some homies like like marco bucci and guy like i met him last time i was the first hey i was the first person to ever recognize marco bucci in public i and if you ask him he will confirm and it's a funny story but um i remember talking to marco bucci last lightbox and uh and he was like i was like yeah man you know i've been I've been thinking about doing YouTube, man. And he was like, you should do it. You should do it. He's like, you should do it. 100%. Blah, 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 blah. He's like, let's go. So it'll be fun to go to Lightbox this year and be like, yo, Marco, I, I hit 1,000 subscribers. Let's go. He'll be like, yo. He'll be he'll be hype. I love Marco Bucci. This guy's he's, he's awesome. My favorite thing Marco Bucci ever did was, <laughs> and I think I've talked about it on stream before. I'm not, I don't want to incriminate him or anything, but, but, <laughs> but <laughs> what happened was, he did like a three-part video series for I think it was like Aces or whatever, like for their all-in-one laptop. It was like something where you can like draw on the laptop and also do other stuff, whatever. And it was interesting, you know. He did a whole Blender animation class. It was like really sick. It was a cool project. Three video set sponsorship for this for for this company. It being like this, you can and you can do it all with this computer and look at all the stuff you can do. The next video. The very next video, like the next day, <laughs> it was like immediate. He goes, he goes, yo guys, I just got this 32 inch Cintiq and it's so cool. <laughs> and he's like hyping up the Cintiq and he's like so excited about it. <laughs> it was like right after he was promoting this other product. It was like hilarious. It was almost like he got paid and, and instead of like using the thing that he did, he just like used the money he got paid to market the thing to just get the Cintiq. Like it was so funny to me. I, I remember seeing it being like, yo, this guy's base. This guy's so, what, what a what a Chad. All right. It looks like this pose is working. What do you guys think? I think this is good. Um, the only thing is I maybe like want to cushion the butt a little bit, like give it a cool design, maybe, you know, like it comes over the shoulder a little bit, maybe, or like some cool stuff. But other than that, I think this is pretty, pretty good, to be honest. He's holding it long. He's holding the long, this long gun. Mm. Yeah, I'll make the center part a little bit bigger, I think, to kind of just like show the size of the weapon. Like that, something like that, maybe. Remember, but yeah, dude, Marco's such a chad for that. What an absolute sigma male. I saw this meme that was like a sigma male is just a is just a guy without a bedtime, and I was like, damn, true. All right, the perspective on the gun is off, but we can fix that in the line art. That's fine. His classes on his website are amazing, dude. Marco's incredible, dude. He's incredible. PB says, it's that meme of the couple walking and the guy's looking at another girl while walking by. Yeah, exactly. It was so funny. The only case of don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Uh, yeah, exactly, PP. A true savage all right so we got this guy he's looking cool 
giving them some cool gear. Could really load the gear up on these guys, you know. These are like some some backcountry rebel guys, you know. He's he's doing his duty. He's he's a lone wolf. He's out here by himself. Or maybe he's with the scout guy, whom I love. Maybe he's with this guy, who's like gonna help him a little bit. He's cool. Maybe we can sketch him out a little bit more before we end the stream, so we get a little bit more drawing done. Today was definitely more of a casual stream, I think. Because we hit 1K. Let's go. Let's go. Let's absolutely go. Mojo says, Gabriel, I find myself doing the little thingy shapes that you do with clothes and hair. Little flingy shapes. <laughs> I feel like a lot of my influences seep into my work and I don't realize it. Dude, that happens to the best of us, man. That's great. I'm happy. That's awesome. I'm getting called pee, pee for the past hour is making me hysterical. Well, you know what? what? What else do I have to go on, buddy? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I'm glad I called this one casual character design because this is just ca casual as heck. We've like barely done any character design today. Um... So let's see, we got this we got this boy here. I actually love this guy. He he was my favorite of like the last batch of characters I did. I just like him a lot. It's like a lot of fun. His like face covering thing was like almost very like anime esque, I feel. Uh, Zella says Pinterest always gets me I never spend just a few minutes on Pinterest It's true You guys gotta like Figure out like How to best optimize your Pinterest experience I've spent I've spent a couple years Perfecting my My Pinterest game It is pretty radical Mojo's right <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> you guys are funny. Very wholesome community. Let's go. All right. We're going to have to end the stream pretty soon, guys. Boom, boom, boom. This is a great reminder midstream, guys. If you're liking the stream, definitely hit the like button. If you want to catch the next one, subscribe. If you want to join our Discord, we have a lot of fun on there. You can join it in the link in the description. We do character design challenges. We do just kind of hangouts, fun stuff. Um, and like a lot of cool things are coming as well to that that I've been working on. So hype, 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 hype. But yeah, yeah, workshops are coming and mentorships are coming. And the lo the largest goal, the end goal, is out of all the learning from the workshops and the mentorships, I'm going to hopefully develop a self-study course for character design and world building. That's going to be the goal. But you can't just make that stuff without any experience. So we really want to make sure that all the knowledge is very applicable and useful. There's use cases, tested, all that stuff. Above the board, man. No scams. Yucky. Very high quality, useful. And stuff that, you know, isn't isn't like super available. Like address a need. You know what I mean? I feel like nobody knows how to do world building. It's like so vague. Or even like shape design, man. I think shape design is one of the worst taught 
um, like uh, ideas. Like nobody knows how to talk about shape design really. PB says, I love world building. Epic. Okay, sick. Sorry, guys, responding to a text right now. Cool. Cool. I just told my girlfriend I hit 1K on stream. Let's go. Shout out, shout out to the best supportive girlfriend ever. Ever. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, you know, your girlfriend's pretty cool, but my girlfriend's actually probably cooler, and I'm just going to stop right there. That's just not true. It's not true. And it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay that I have the best girlfriend. That's fine. It's allowed. <laughs> Seriously, though, she is the absolute best. My God. Shape design was so difficult to grasp when I first came across it. Dude, and there's levels to shape design. There's like introduction, you know, and then there's a million applications. Then there's like, uh, yeah, I won't get into it. <laughs> All the shapes, I need them. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Yeah, dude, big shout out to GF, dude. She's the best. That's funny, PP. <laughs> uh, we do stand. We do stand. We stand her. She's the best. She's actually just the best, man. I'm going to cry if I think about it for too long. <laughs> cool. I actually might, dude. She's just, like actually one of the best people I know. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I was just I was just passing through New York and I met her like randomly and I moved here <laughs> because I wanted to be closer to her and I just moved to New York. So she's pretty cool. All right, since this guy's the kind of scout guy, I want to give him, like, a ton of gear, like, a bunch of stuff. So I feel like we're just going to, like, put little rolls, rolls of things. It starts with shape, and then you kind of figure out what it is later, you know? That's sort of, like, working backwards from, like, a volume of stuff, you know? It's like scribbling things onto a, onto a shelf, and you're like, well, that's actually a bottle. That's actually this. Love is Grim says, my issue is is uh, going from stylization to realism. It's hard. Ha, <laughs> it's right, PP. It's so right. <laughs> Simon says, don't cry just in case ugly crying eagles losing subscribers on YouTube. That's so funny. <laughs> He looks emo, not going to lie. Oh, dude, this guy's for sure emo. Like, for sure.
Sick. All right, we're a little focus mode right now. We're just wanting to close out some of these ideas here. So one thing I didn't talk about last time is going from sketch to color, like with the past concepts, like uh, going from the sketches. Do I have the sketch? Just the sketches? I do. I definitely do. Yeah, going from just these sketches into dropping in color. This one, I'm trying this character as a girl to see if it like works a little bit better. Uh, or, you know, pushing into this color or even this color, like going from the, from these sketches to like something workable, usable, even though it's still rough, something like clear. Um, these are very flat colors. Like if I were to go into black and white, it's like they're pretty neutrally, not super high contrast or anything. And for design, this is good, right? And uh, we can go into like lighting and stuff probably in another stream. There's like there's like somewhat implied lighting, but like not actually. All right, we're drawing Scout Guy, right? Yeah, we're drawing Scout Guy. Scout Guy. Doing Scout stuff. Yeah. Scouting around. Emo Kakashi. Bro, exactly. Kakashi. Wah. This guy's fun. He's got little pouches and stuff everywhere. You know, he's doing stuff. He's doing a little scout stuff. Doing a little scout-esque stuff. Sunny says, expanding on my, on my earlier question, what is your favorite myth? Hmm. Hmm. My favorite myth. That's a great question. That's a really great question. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to do a top several. Orpheus, story of Orpheus trying to escape Hades. Incredible story. I love that story. Beautiful story. Sad story. I love the story of Loki's children in Norse mythology. So that is like, um, the dog, obviously the serpent, like how I want to say his name was, what was his name? Fenrir, yeah, Fenrir, dude. Like Fen the story of Fenrir, how they captured him because they were afraid of how powerful he was, but he was just kind of chilling. And then when they captured him, like he got super pit. Like I like how they fulfilled the prophecy that he would destroy the world and and kill Odin and all that stuff. Like almost by capturing him, like out of fear. Like it's just interesting. There's like a lot of stuff there. Um, and with the serpent as well, just talking about like the nature of exponential growth and stuff. Like there's there's just cool stuff going on. Um, also, I like. Um, Theseus and the and the Minotaur. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Theseus and the Minotaur is really good. Or the one armed Norse god. Are you talking about the god of war? I think I played that god in a play, without the hand. That one. Um. Yeah, I like. Also, I mean, it's not really mythology. It's from the Bhagavad Gita, but the story of Arjuna. One of the stories of Arjuna and Krishna. Where Krishna essentially is like, you got to fight. And Arjuna is like, I don't really want to. And then Krishna is like, yeah, but it's kind of like what's going on right now. So you got you got to kind of do what's going on right now. And then um, he's like, okay, bet. I just like love that. <laughs> I just love like, I don't really want to fight. It's like, yeah, it's kind of what's happening right now. You kind of got to be a part of what's happening. It's cool. Uh, PP says, can I ask what goes behind your choice of background color for these designs? Is it to keep all the colors uh, harmonious with that hue or is it for value reasons? It's both. 
Definitely both. So working with a neutral or like toned background, something that's not white is going to help you uh, have better darks and lights usually. I mean, it, it, of course it all depends, but I like doing these kind of designs on, on this kind of tanned thing because I'm sort of painting in the highlights and painting in the shadows and working with the midtones. It helps a lot um, personally. Oh, that's Bay Salmon. Shamaran, old folk myth from my region. That's cool. Dude, I also like uh, from the Arabian Nights. Just the, o just the origin story of like how a broken heart set in motion the Arabian Nights, like infidelity and a broken heart. Like it's really interesting. A thousand and one Ara Arabian Nights. Um,. I love Dracula's original story. I don't know if I know the OG Dracula story, but I have loved all the interpretations for sure, Ayub. Tear. Yeah, tear based. White hurts the eyeballs. It's true. Love is grim. It's true. White is bright. Zilla says, also, I can imagine that it's old parchment. Oh, totally. So, like, medium does change how you think and how you work. Um, when artists say like brushes don't matter, I think that those artists already have such a strong process. They forget that the brushes they use influence them in developing that process and they can replicate that process with other brushes or be adventurous, but they don't remember what it was like to not have a process. So I don't like the whole brushes don't matter argument. They absolutely do matter, but you shouldn't rely on them, but you should learn through using them like, like any other tool. Duh. Um, but yeah, so what were we talking about? Oh yeah, we're just kind of wrapping up this design, I think. Y'all can just call me Grim Sick. I was going to ask that actually. Cool, 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 cool. Based? Mm, based? So, all right, we pushed this guy a little bit. Mm, did we like when more of the face was showing? Maybe it was, maybe it was a little bit better. It was a little more friendly. Hmm. I like the old face better. This happens to me all the time. Save a version of that too. Ooh, some great points in the chat. Oh, Salmon says, I love the fact that Arabian Nights is old Iranian and Indian story, but it's called Arabian Nights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Grim says, I'm going to be honest. I don't like doing digital. It makes me panic. Yeah, man, it's tough. It's jarring, especially if you've been drawing pencil and paper. It's super jarring. Uh, Basilizek says, also welcome to the chat, Bazzy. Um, says, what canvas size do you work on during concepts like this? This one I'm doing 5K by 3.5K, 300 DPI. But that's just personal preference. Like, I don't like getting wrecked later by having smaller files, so I work on a bigger, a bigger file. But I'm I'm on a computer with like a decent processor, so it can like handle it. Speaking of which, gotta save. Um. Ooh, all right, guys. Looks like we're going to have to close up the stream now. So... Gosh, whenever I'm in like the rhythm, I never want to end the stream. 
You know what I mean? I always just want to keep going. I just want to keep going. We could do like a fun character with a with a braid. I love like big big braid. Big braid on character. It's really fun. I also love that every character has this kind of like winter hat. Like it's a fun design constraint. Design constraints are oftentimes really fun. I was working on a, gosh, what was it? It was a character recently where I was like having fun with the uh, line art or like the idea of like uniform, like creating like a fake uniform, you know? Yeah, like this guy. Ooh, see that white, <sighs> oof, hurts. See what I mean, guys? See what I mean? Bring it down to a nice cream. I did this design a while ago and I just like finished some of the line art recently just for fun. But I like this guy a lot. He's really fun. Maybe we'll chuck some colors on this guy before I go. That'll be that'll be cool. I feel like this guy should be in blue for some reason. This is very like Mobius-esque, like pen and ink kind of style. This is a, uh, I did this design, I think I started it last year, finishing it this year. Maybe, maybe it was last year. I don't really remember. This year is just flown by, man. Myth, you're late to the myth talk. That's so funny. Welcome, myth. Oh, yeah, that's interesting, Salmon. I heard that was a principle in rug design. It was cool. Not making sure that, you know, imperfection is uh, included. It's interesting. Okay, actually, I really don't have time to do this, but I, I, I wish I could. But um, yeah, we had some fun working on working on our boy. We'll have to finish up this like next time, or maybe I'll do it off stream or something. But it was fun kind of taking this and sketching out his his uh, his pose here, um, like you know what he could be like as a, as a full character. Maybe we'll do that for a couple other characters too for fun. Um, it'll be fun to clean this up. I think we got a great uh, great energy here. And um, the tweaks we did to his hair feel good too. But uh, yeah, this was really fun, guys. It was great. Super happy we hit 1K this stream. That's like so cool. And uh, yeah, just great vibes on the stream. Thanks for enduring my rants and whatnot. You guys are awesome. And uh, yeah, if you if you were watching this back as a recording, you're awesome. Wow, you made it through. I'm impressed. And if you're live, if you're watching this live, you're champ, based, epic, awesome. I love you. Thank you so much. And uh, if you like the stream, definitely hit like. If you want to catch the next one, definitely subscribe. Um, if you want to join our community, you can do so through the Patreon in the description. Join our, join our Patreon Discord. We're doing character design challenges. The next one is tomorrow at around midday uh, EST. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining. You guys are awesome. And I will see you all on the next one. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Much love.